All right, here is the leaked phone call between Cassandra Fairbanks and Aaron Schwartz. Cassandra, hey. hey, you're, you're, you're posting classified information on Twitter. You can't do that. What? The, I'm not posting classified information. Yeah, Rick. Yeah, that, that's classified. Yeah, Rick's role was classified. You can't do that. ABC News already reported it. That's where I saw it. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, but not his role. You, you are posting things that are classified and no one knows it has not been reported. That was reported by ABC News. Yeah, I know what was reported. I see what you're tweeting. What you're tweeting is not what was reported. Someone's going to go to jail. You need to stop this. Yeah, Julian's in jail right now because of I this. I don't want to go to jail. Well, I mean, I, I'll delete my tweet only because you're saying that you'll get in trouble. I want to go to jail. Please, I'm begging you. Alright, I will delete it. I was just referring to the ABC okay, News report. But, okay, but, like, they look into you, they see that we speak. Like, that, that, like, that's bad. I mean, I, uh, the reason- Take the orders from the president. Okay? So you're gonna punish me because he took orders from the president? I like, wasn't punishing you, I was tweeting from the ABC okay. News report. Okay. Remember, I called you about it. I'm begging you. I'm begging you. Please. All right. I will delete the tweets. Thank you. He was taking orders from the president. Obviously, back in 2016, Trump was riding the wave of WikiLeaks and Julian Assange. He even told him to release the emails. So every week, every... Day at these rallies on the campaign trail, he was always bragging about the the latest WikiLeaks release. You know, uh, heck, there was the the ones about all the pedophilia networks, uh, the Podesta emails. Uh, obviously, of course, the Hillary Clinton emails. And um, so Trump won the White House in large part due to Julian Assange and WikiLeaks. We now know of. President Trump's direct involvement in the arrest of Assange, of course, at the Ecuadorian embassy in London. That was back in 2019, of course. Also, um, at, the, at the time, Ambassador Richard Grinnell, who is now the director of the Office of the Director of National Intelligence, he was also personally involved in the arrangements for that. Basically obtaining confirmation from the U.S. Justice Department that the U.S. government would not seek the death penalty. According to the senior U.S. official, Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein consented. That enabled Grinnell to make the pledge. The agreement between the U.S. and Ecuador was a verbal one, according to a source in the Ecuadorian government. And this was actually reported by ABC News. This is actually from the ABC News report that uh, Cassandra Fairbanks cited to Arthur Schwartz in the leaked phone call. You can check it out. It was uh, published on April 15, 2019. U.S. gave verbal pledge of no death penalty for Assange. Sources. Of course, as you already heard in the uh, phone call, Schwartz was accusing Fairbanks of tweeting classified info as far as um, Richard Grinnell's role and um, as far and his uh, uh, direct dealings in that matter. But of course, Fairbanks, as she cited to him, was simply uh, citing the, the ABC News report that was already information publicly available. He even told her, please, I'm begging you. They look at you, they see that we speak, that's bad. He's, Grinnell, is taking orders from the president, okay? So you're going to punish me because he took orders from the president. I'm begging you, I'm begging you, please. Obviously, he was uh, trying to convince her to delete the uh, tweets, of course. So, go to uh, Cassandra Fairbanks' uh, Twitter page, and you can scroll down, and you can see she's obviously been tweeting quite extensively about this. Uh, giving greater context and the reason why she uh, posted or tweeted 
um, the leaked phone call uh, to begin with. I'll provide a link for that in the description. And all of this has actually been reported by, uh, you know, media, mainstream media earlier in the week. Of course, part of the reasoning from the U.S. side as far as um, uh, charges against Julian Assange is concerned, even though he's not a U.S. citizen, is that they, the United States government believes that Assange's publication in relation to conduct described in the indictment filed under seal in March 2018 in the Eastern District of Virginia, the indictment alleges that Assange in 2010 agreed to assist Manning, that's uh, Bradley, now Chelsea Manning, in cracking a password stored on United States Department of Defense computers connected to the secret internet protocol network, a United States government network used for classified documents and communications. These government materials included diplomatic cables and disturbing videos of U.S. military forces in Iraq, basically com uh, crimes committed by the U.S. military uh, servicemen and women. And it was not Assange who uh, stole this uh, co uh, material content, it was Manning. So, the U.S. wants you to think it's prosecuting Julian Assange for putting lives at risk. Make no mistake, this is an assault on journalism. Now, Chelsea Manning's sentencing hearing, the Pentagon said they had uncovered no specific examples of anyone who had lost his or her life in reprisals that followed the publication. The Pentagon's chief investigator into WikiLeaks Brigadier General Robert Carr said, I don't have a specific example. Literally zero evidence of harm. Ethan McCord, a U.S. Army soldier, said, A major turning point was when I pulled those kids out of the van. I stopped firing my weapon. I stopped beating people needlessly. It was at that point that I really realized what we were doing was wrong. So we are now living in an age in which journalism, which actually exposes crimes committed during warfare operations, and of course its ensuing cover-ups by the government, is now a considered a crime, not the crimes themselves. Trump's motivation for um, having uh, Assange arrested, for making arrangements for that, is he wanted, uh, he's been wanting Assange to basically say in court that he did not receive those leaks from Russia in regards to the uh, DNC leaks which Assange has already uh, declared that he did not receive them from uh, Russia but of course we all know that that was leaked by uh, DNC uh, Seth Rich and we all know what happened to him so, if it's Julian Assange is extradited to the United States, Trump obviously should pardon him, even though he already had him uh, arrested. And that's where this all this talk of the uh, alleged uh, pardon offer came into play last week, um, in which Trump allegedly was trying to gain more points from Assange, whether that's true or not. So, really, what is happening to Assange is an attack, and what is happening on an attack on uh, free speech, the First Amendment, really is a tragedy of justice and freedom. And all this is happening under the watch of Trump, mind you. Now, I just want to get the truth out. I'm not, a, I'm not a never Trumper. I voted for him. But I also believe that we uh, really, if we really hold dear to the principles and liberty, that we, then, then we need to hold our elected officials accountable and that does include the ones that we voted for. Okay? Happy trails.